In this video, we're going to find the domain symbolically of this radical function and confirm it with a graph. So to begin with, whenever we have a radical function, we know that the radicand, what's underneath the radical, assuming it's an even root, must be greater than or equal to zero. So for this problem, that gives us x squared plus 2x minus 24 must be greater than or equal to zero. That is, it cannot be negative. Now this is a quadratic inequality, and we'll start solving that quadratic inequality by, look, by factoring. So we're looking to break this up into two factors to give us the points at which it'll change sign from positive to negative and vice versa. So what we're looking for are two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and combine, add or subtract, depending on their signs, to a positive 2. So thinking through the factors of 24, we're looking for two numbers that differ by 2. And if 4 and 6, notice they differ by 2. Now we need a positive on the 2, so the larger of the 2, the 6 will be the positive, and the 4 will be negative. Now double check that by multiplying first your your terms in the last, so negative 4 times positive 6 will get you that negative 24, and the outer and the inner will combine, let's see, po outer will give us 6x, uh, inner will give us negative 4x, so 6 minus 4 gets us that 2x, so we're, we're right on target there. So now we'll take each factor and set it equal to 0 and solve. We're just trying to find the numbers, again, that they change signs at. So we get 4 and negative 6. So what this is saying, if we draw a number line, here's negative 6, the smaller of the two numbers, and here's 4. So those two numbers break the, uh, the number line into three separate intervals. Numbers less than negative 6, going this way. Numbers between negative 6 and 4 right here, and then numbers greater than 4. There's our three separate intervals. Now we want to know which one, uh, which one or multiples of these intervals will give us a product that's greater than or equal to 0. That is our x squared plus 2x minus 24. Now we can pick test numbers in each of these. Uh, for example, we could do negative 10. That's less than negative 6. 0, 0 is a nice number to do computation with, between negative 6 and 4, and let's say 10. And if we test these in uh, x squared plus 2x minus 24, we'll see which ones end up being greater than or equal to 0. So doing negative 10, we'd have negative 10 squared plus 2 times negative 10 minus 24. Let's keep that over there. So that's 100 minus 20, minus 24. I don't even really care about the number. I know it's going to be positive. So if it's positive, then that's greater than zero. That means we're going to include this interval. That's great news. Now zero, zero is much easier to calculate. Zero squared plus two times zero minus 24 because anything with the zeros are going to go away and we're left with negative 24. Negative 24 is not greater than or equal to 0, so that's not going to be in our interval. And then finally, 10. 10 squared plus 2 times 10 minus 24. That'll give us 100 plus 20 minus 24. We can see we have plenty of numbers in the positives to keep us positive. So in that interval, we're positive. So if we put this together, we can conclude that our um, inequality is true from negative infinity up to negative 6, and because of the equal sign in the problem, we put a bracket and includes it. Union, we don't use anything in the middle, but then we pick it up again over here at 4 with that bracket because of the equal sign, and go to infinity. So that would be the domain of that radical function that included a quadratic expression underneath the radical. Now let's take a look at what the graph of that looks like. So if we add our graph here. And 
there it is, um, we can kind of confirm this. Now, first of all, this graph isn't quite right in that it does show some things in the middle here. Um, if we point to these right in here, there's nothing really happening there. Um, but we do see there's a spoke of the graph, notice the number, uh, less than negative 6, and another part of the graph that starts at 4. And of course, goes off to negative infinity up until that negative 6, and then from 4 to positive infinity. So our graph confirms the domain that we came up with, and we're right on track.